Hello, good evening, and welcome to Practical Christianity Bible Study. My name is Tunde Disu. Thank you for being part of tonight's program. We are starting a new series tonight. We are going to be looking at and talking about praise and worship. Praise and worship. And as you know, I don't know how long this series is going to be. But we're just going to keep digging at it, keep digging at it until we we get to a point where we feel we've, we've gotten enough out of it or gotten as much as we can out of it. So uh, it's going to be a long one. We are starting today by looking at or trying to understand what praise and worship is. Understanding praise and worship. You probably have heard, or maybe you've said it yourself. You've heard people say, "Oh, I don't want to go into, I don't want to get to church early because I don't. I think the praise and worship session is just too long, or I don't like the way they sing, or I don't like what they, and all of that. And so they, they miss, they avoid attending or being part of the praise and worship session. But that's in a church setting. What about your private life? What about in your it, by yourself when you're on your own, what's your attitude, what is your your practice of praise and worshipping and giving God all the glory? You see, if man can only think, if all that you and I can do all day, every day, throughout the year, is to just sit down and think, and cast our minds back and just examine how far we have come and just take take stock of where we are. Do a, a an inventory of the summation of, of our journey, of our lives, of what we've seen, what we've been, where we've been, what we've handled, the people that we've encountered, the experiences that we've gained, the challenges that life has thrown at us and how we've come out of it or not still going through it and all of that if all we can do is to just sit down and think and just think back and look where we were and look at where we are and consider consider the journey from the beginning to where we are today if we look back at what has been the story of our lives, of your life and my life, if we can just think not even about where we're going, not about the destination, not about tomorrow, not about what is going to happen in future or, or next year, or no, just from where you were to where you are right now. If we can spend time to consider that and just ponder on it and think about it and examine it and play the video and the audio and and just go through the powerpoints and just look at each chapter one after the other if we can just think i am convinced that our our responses the outcome of that thinking session that we we would have, our reaction, our response will be to re, to acknowledge that there is more to this than what we or who we are or what we know or how big or how strong or the the quality of 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 our of our of our status in life, our education our job tied to the, the, the take home pay and the accomplishment when when you think about all those things you will come to a point where with a good reasonable mindset you will come to a point where all you can say is wow wow look at how far I have come but more importantly, see how far, see how 
the journey has been, the, 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 the transition from one point to another. Look at what has been compressed into this my life journey to where I am today. But most importantly, I believe what we'll conclude with or the final conclusion will be I, didn't, I, I, I can't see this happening because of something that I have done or what I know or who I know or where I have been or what I have. No, you can co completely, definitely see that there is more to these than meet the eyes. You see, the inability of man, the inability of you and I, to recognize this journey of life. To acknowledge that there has been more to that journey than your knowledge or your connection or your savvy or your shrewdness or your strength. That inability of man to, to, to audit and take stock of his or her life is the handicap to praise and worship in our lives. The inability to recognize that this is not by power. This is not by might. There is more behind this result than something that I have personally achieved by the strength of my hands. But because we feel, we, 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 we live a life that says, whatever you, you have is yours. Get all you can. Then can everything that you got. And then sit on the can so that nobody will touch it. The challenge to that is why you are sitting on the can or the pot or the bag or whatever it is you have put all of your garden, all of the, your, the things that you have. Whatever it is you are sitting on, while you are sitting on it, the content is, is decaying. Because one of the primary reasons why things will come into your hand, one of the primary reasons why God will put a, 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 a blessing, a skill, a talent, a grace on you in your hand, is so that you can use it to be a blessing to mankind. But if all you see in it is for me, me, myself, and I, guess what? It'll be like the Dead Sea. Everything goes in, nothing comes out. And over time, it will start to decay. So the inability of you and I to, uh, to recognize the hand of God, the, 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 the aspect of God, the fact that we couldn't have done or be who we are or what we have today without him, that inability is what is denying or robbing us or what has blinded man from being able to appreciate God, to praise God, to worship God. You see, the importance of praise, the, 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 the strength and the significance of worship is not lost on any of us. Well, why would you say that today? Because thanksgiving, praise, is one of the basic fundamental life lessons that you and I learned even while we were toddlers, while we were growing up. One of the first lessons in life that you, you will learn or you have learned or you must have learned is the ability, ability to say thank you. The ability to say thank you. Even in adulthood, we are still learning how to say thank you properly, effectively, adequately. But you see, in order for you to say thank you, in order for you to give praise, in order for you to, to worship, in order for you to, to acknowledge, for, for you to praise, you have to first acknowledge. There has to be an element of acknowledgement. 
that there is more to thee than may be asked. Then there has to be a process of appreciation of what you have. Because many of us, we spend all of our lives complaining and griping and wondering why we don't have this. How come I haven't gotten that? Why am I going to get this? Rather than to spend that energy appreciating what we already have. So the first leg of, of being able to give good thanks is, for, is the level of acknowledgement. To, to acknowledge that what's in my hand is divine. What's on my life? It's divine. This thing that I'm enjoying, this thing that is working for me, is beyond my ability. And so the, that then moves you to the next step, which is the appreciation. And when you appreciate what you have, and you've already recognized that this thing that you have, this thing that you that you have become, is nothing to do with your strength. The next natural step will be for you to, to look outside of yourself. To ask the question, what is responsible or who is responsible if this is not by my making? And when you recognize that the, 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 the person that is responsible is outside of you, the only natural response is for you to say, thank you. Sometimes your children, even while they were little, somebody will give them something. What is the first thing that you say to that child? What are you going to say? Have you said thank you? Say thank you to your uncle. And sometimes when they are reluctant or they are shy or they, they don't want to say it for whatever reason, we even we hold them accountable. We hold those children accountable to the extent that some of them we even withdraw some perks, things that they, they, they like. We, 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 we tell them to sit down in a, in a place. We, we do something for them to know that it is, it is of utmost importance that you acknowledge and you appreciate and you verbally say the word. Thank you. Because you know there is more to this than yourself. But because we say thank you casually, that has transformed into the relationship that we have with God. That has become, it has shaped our mindset to treat God like our cousins, like our neighbors. To relate to him and, and appreciate him just like you do with your children or your spouse or your friend. Because we take it for granted that that's what he's supposed to do. That is what he should do. And sometimes we do that out of habit, out of familiarity, out of, out of, out of the closeness that we have. With God, we, we take that for granted. And most of the time, especially for those of us who are born again Christians, the reason that we, we, we struggle with praise and worship, which is a form of acknowledgement and appreciation of God, is because religion has taught us that you appreciate, you say thank you when something has been a benefit to you, when you have gained something out of it. While that's, there is nothing wrong with that concept, the only challenge is most of us Christians, we spend our lives, we spend our time, we, we, we walk through this life of being a Christian with God, living perpetually in a zone of expectations rather than a place of, 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 of manifestation. We are always hoping. We are always planning. We are always believing. We are always 
exercising our faith. Now, there's nothing wrong in all of that, but because we never come to a point where we are, where we acknowledge the manifestation, the tangibility of our hope, of our expectations, we struggle to say thank you to God. We are accustomed to thanking people when they have done something for us that is of that we have benefited from. So then you have Christians thinking, what, 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 excuse me? What am I thanking God for? What has he done for me? I'm still waiting. I mean, the prayer point we made at the crossover three years ago is still on my prayer list. That has not even been answered. So what am I thanking him for? But you see, thanking God, praising God, worshiping God, goes far further, more important. It carries more significance than your bills paid, than your body healed, than your, your, your promotion in your hand or whatever it is you factor into the equation. But you see, if you really want to understand if you want to really get get hold of what it means to thank God and to worship him, study the life of David. Study the life of David. You know, in all of David's stories and everything else that we know, in fact, when you read about David, you will read more about his atrocities than the good things that he did. And so many of us wonder, we wonder why after all of that, God will still come and say, this is the man after my own heart. God is not partial. The reason God can say that about David is because of the, the nature of, the strength, the quality of David's relationship with God. Because as far as David is concerned, he is not thanking God because of anything. No, he is thanking God. He is praising God. He is worshiping God. Despite of all the other, everything else that you want to factor into the equation. And that is why he takes it upon himself to go outside of his natural human feelings and, and everything. He, he It's like he slaps himself to say, are you for real? This is not about what you feel or how you feel. We are going to do this. Screaming and shouting. He reminds himself why he needs to praise God. Why he needs to worship God. Why he needs to bow down before him. Do you know why? Because he has the the his in my opinion david's great greatest strength is his ability to think not to think about warfare not to think about anything else but to think about god no wonder the bible said he will keep you in perfect peace because your mind is stayed on him david's mind is permanently Constantly, consistently stayed on God. For instance, in Psalm 103, from verse 1 to verse 5, he said, Bless the Lord, O my soul. That is a statement of commandment. That is a statement of instruction. That is a statement of demanding of himself of demanding of his soul what to do. He said, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, my kidney, my liver, my pancreas, my eyes, my finger, my teeth, everything in me, your assignment today is to bless God. Your purpose today is to praise God. 
to bless his holy name. What did he say? He said, bless the Lord in verse 2. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. What is he saying? He's reminding his soul. He's reminding himself. He's looking at his journey from where he was to where he is now. And he's ascribing all the accomplishments, the existence of life, the, the protection from enemies, everything he's saying, it has nothing to do with me, but everything to do with him. And so he's reminding himself, there are so many benefits that, I've, that I am enjoying today that has only been made possible by God Almighty. So he said, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. And he repeated, he said, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. And then there is a full colon after benefits. You know why? Because he's about to give us a list or a summary of some of these benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities. Who, who crowned thee with loving kindness and tender mercy. Who satisfy your mouth with good things. So that your youth is renewed like the eagles. What is he saying? He's saying, look. This, we, need to, we need to grow. He's saying to his, his soul and his mind and every part, everything in him. He's saying, look beyond what is in this plate of rice in front of you. Look how far God has brought you. Look what God has done for you. Look how much he has, he has held you in his, in his arms. He has forgiven all of your iniquities. Not just your sins. Your sins and then your iniquities as well. The generational sins that all of your great grandfather, mother, and all the uncles and aunties, all of them, God for, has forgiven you all of that. He delivered you from destruction. He then crowned you with his loving kindness and he showered you with his tender mercies. He satisfies your mouth, even including the food that is going in your mouth. He, he ensures that it is the choice, the best of the choice, just the way you like it. And because of that, your body is nourished and is radiating and shining like that of, of an eagle. Question. When was the last time you took stock? Of the things that God has done for you right now. When was the last time I sat down to write out some of the blessings of God in my life to give me reason to, to bring me to a place where I can fall on my knees and lift my hands and say, Lord, I bless your name. You see, praising God and worshiping God is something that we should do all the time, every time. Not just when you are in church. Not just when you are in, in, in your house. No, no, no. It is something that you do consistently and constantly. Because if you can think every time of His goodness... Of, if, of his wonders, of his blessings, of his provisions and protections. Your mouth should be, pa, pa, pa. thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All the time. Because you can see, you can see the hand of God, the impact of his presence in your life, the essence of his name that has been stamped on your forehead. The fact that you carry his emblem. 
you should be overwhelmed. You have to be, we all have to come to, we must live perpetually in a position, in a place, in an environment, in a, in a, in, within the concept of our, of our thoughts. Be overwhelmed all the time because of his goodness, because, because of his mercy, because of his grace and his provision and his blessings in our lives. Well, you know, Tunde, what you're saying is not possible. I mean, if we do that, what time would we have to work? We have to then pick up the children from school and then do the laundry and then do some cooking and go and cut the grass and the game and on and on and on. But you see, you can do all of that and still praise God in the midst of all of it. Look at Revelations. Revelations chapter 4 verse 8. Revelations chapter 4 verse 8. He said, And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. These four beasts, they have nothing, they don't do anything else. They consistently, constantly, permanently, without failing. The Bible said, they rest not day and night. Round the clock. No holiday, no toilet break, no sit down, no... No, they don't say anything else. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty which was and is and is to come. Look at Revelation chapter 4 from verse 9 to verse 11. And when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne, who liveth forever and ever, the four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. Why? For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. If you... If you study this, this passage in Revelation chapter 4 from verse 9 to 11, you will notice that these 24 elders never said anything about themselves. They never, they're not thanking God. They're not praising God. They're not worshiping Him because of what He's done for them. No. All the praise, all the worship, everything that they are giving to God is just because of who He is. You know why they do that? Do you know why they are constantly, forever and ever, just in this position? I mean, what's the point of them having thrones? And yet they can't sit on it. Because the four beasts never stop praising. And he said, when those beasts give glory, the 24 elders, they cast their crown on the floor. They bow before him. They worship him. The reason, in my opinion, by my understanding, why they cannot stop praising God, why they cannot stop worshipping God is every time they cast their crown to the floor, when they look up, they see a new sight, a new dimension, a new glory, a new manifestation, the, a, a new dispensation of God that they've not seen before. And that the awesomeness of that experience they down again and then they lift up their eyes and there's a new color 
a new aroma, a new fragrance, a new dimension, a, 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 a new experience they've never seen before. And again, they bow down, they praise him, they worship him. Do you know you and I can also see those new dimensions, new manifestations, new revelations, new dispensations, new glory of God, like every second, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. All we have to do is to just keep our mind stayed on him and he will reveal himself every time. Anytime, everywhere, anywhere, anyhow. It doesn't matter where you are. The presence of God is there with you. Excuse me. So the natural reaction to praise, when you praise God, just like if somebody praises you, the natural reaction, the natural tendency is that you are encouraged to do more. You are encouraged to produce more. You are encouraged to spare no cost. To lavish your, 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 your provision on that person. Have you seen, especially from if you are from our side of, uh, of the world, have you noticed that when there is a, a celebration, a party or something, and the musician starts to sing, and then they start to sing the praise of somebody, their natural reaction is to to, to, to express their satisfaction towards that musician. It's the same thing with God. Every time you just you just love on him. You, he just loves on you back. You know, God does not feed on anything. He does not eat anything. He doesn't drink anything. He doesn't need anything. But oh boy, oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy. When his children starts to praise him and worship him, now you've touched his, you've touched his heart. Now you have just... You have, you have, you, oh, there is something about, about God when you worship him, when you praise him. No wonder the Bible said God is seeking, he's looking, he's searching for people that will worship him in spirit and in truth. Now that tells me that there are so many of us that are, Raising, lifting only hands and praising and worshiping God, and God is clapping to say, Well done. But then there are those that when they praise Him, when they worship Him, they, they, they bring tears to His eyes, as it were. They just overwhelm Him. They just, they, he just can't resist their presence. When you praise God, I need you to hear this. When you praise God, it means you appreciate Him for everything He's done. That's what praise does. That's what praise is. Praise is an appreciation. It's a show, rather, of appreciation. When you praise God, you are talking about God to others. You are telling others of his goodness, of his blessings, of his, of his provisions, of his protections, of, his, of everything that he has done for you. Look at where we are in this world today. Where people are just falling down like flies. People are dying in their hundreds and in their thousands. They live on the same street that you live. They go to the same supermarket that you go. They enter the same bus or train that you do. They, everything 
But somehow, you are, you are still here. Somehow, I am still here. For whatever reason, he, he, that is only known to God himself, you and I are preserved. We are protected. We are exempted. He said a thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand on your right side. It won't come near you. He said no plague is allowed to come near my dwelling and your dwelling. So before you are too smart for yourself to say, well, I, I don't know what to thank God for me. He hasn't done the last thing I asked him. Well, he woke you up this morning. Do you know how many people went to bed last night, didn't wake up this morning? Do you know how many people in that your small village or town or city or wherever you are, do you know how many people actually woke up this morning and they're not, they're not alive right now? Do you know how many of them woke up this morning they are alive right now. But if you ask them what's your name, they don't know it. Do you know how many woke up this morning and they couldn't lift their hand? They could not lift their legs by themselves. Do you know how many people are in hospital right now gasping? Every breath they take is a fight. But you and I, we just... We just breathe and we don't even think about it. So when you praise God, it's a show of appreciation of what he has done. And it's a way of you telling, talking about him, about his deeds, about his wonders, about everything that he has done for you and in your life. But when you worship God, worshiping God is a demonstration of your acknowledgement of who he is. Not what he's done. No, who he is. When you worship God, you are not talking about him. You are talking to him. You are, you are, you are, you are giving back to him what you see of him. You are describing, trying to describe to him your experience of his majesty, of his glory, of his wonders, of, of, of his just awesomeness. When you worship God, you are not talking to him. You are not talking about him, rather. You are talking to him because you acknowledge. You, it's a demonstration of your acknowledgement of who he is. So, there is more to praise and worship than two fast songs and three slow songs that we do in church. When you praise God in the midst of others, like in a gathering, in a church, or in, in any other setting, it is important for you to, 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 to approach that session from a point of understanding. Many of us, when we praise God and we do praise and worship, yes, we, we, we relate to the lyrics and we sing the lyrics and, and, and all of that. But you see... Real praise and real worship is not just you reading what is written on the, on the PowerPoint. No, it's you making that those words, making them personal to you and helping you to express how you see, what you see, and how you feel and what you feel about God and towards God. When you approach praise and worship from that point of understanding, 
You don't need anybody to prompt you. You don't need your favorite worship leader to be the one worshiping so that you can, you can respond. It doesn't matter whether they are singing off keys or no key at all. You just, you just, you are lost in his presence. You, you are just, it is just like, it is just the two of you, you and him. The ability to praise God effectively starts from a place of personal conviction that he is who he is and he has done something that is worthy of your appreciation. When you praise him, in order for your praise and worship, in order for my praise and worship to be effective, it has to come from a place of personal conviction and personal realization that right now there could be 5,000 people in this auditorium, but as far as I'm concerned, it's just me and him. I don't know what he has done for you and what he's doing for you and Thank God for all of that. But right now, it's just the two of us. And that is what brings you to a place where you worship him from your heart, not just singing the lyrics that is on the PowerPoint. But if during praise and worship, all that concerns you, all that you think about, all that bothers you, is your spiritual shopping list. Of the things that are, are yet to happen and the things that are yet to be fulfilled and the things that you are hoping for. If that is your focus, then you've sang. Maybe you've even danced and jumped up and sweat. You haven't praised him. That's not worshiping him. That's why I said if you really want to take your, your praise and worship session to that level beyond just the superficial and just the surface thing. Go and study the life of and the, 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 the nature and the, 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 the uh, 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 outworking of the relationship between David and God as is recorded in Psalms and other books that he wrote. For instance, in Psalm 34, from verse 1 to 4, he said, I will bless the Lord. It's a decision. It is a decision. I will bless the Lord. When? At all times. At all times. How? His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Number two, my soul shall make her boast in the Lord. Why? The humble shall hear therefore and be glad. And then he, he said, magnify the Lord with me. In case you are, you are just watching, watching and, and wondering what is going on, he's inviting you to say, don't miss out on this opportunity. He said, worship the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. Sorting the Lord and being delivered from all his fears is not when he knelt down at night to pray. No. Most of that are done while he's praising him, while he's worshiping him. And we're going to get all of that in this series. Praising God is a decision. It's not a feeling. Oh, no, no, no. It is not a feeling. It's a decision that you make. It's a decision that you, 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 you just don't make, but you, you enforce on yourself. Because once you have made the decision, guess what? Your feelings will just follow through. 
But if you are waiting to feel before you decide, you will wait for eternity. Because maybe this, this, the, the, the lyrics of the song, you are not familiar with it. Maybe they sing it in a different language that you don't know, you don't speak. So it's not about feeling. It's about decision. It's you deciding he's worthy of my praise. And I'm going to give it to him. Whichever way. Because I know. He hears me. He knows me. He sees me. He sees my heart. And he can see that this sacrifice of praise, this sacrifice of worship is coming from the depth of my heart. Psalm 71 from verse 14 to 18 says, But I will hope continually and will yet praise thee more and more. My mouth shall shew forth thy righteousness and thy salvation all the day, for I know not the numbers thereof. I will go in the strength of the Lord. I will make mention of your righteousness even of you only. O oh God, thou hast taught me from my youth, and hitherto have I declared thy wondrous work. I will hope continually. I will praise continually, more and more and more. This my mouth will not be silent, concerning your righteousness and your salvation. I don't know when I'm going to die, but before I die, somebody will hear from this my mouth your praise. I will always talk about your righteousness. Just you. When you focus, when you focus on praising God, even while you are still waiting and hoping and believing and 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 just standing in in standing your your ground while you are doing all of that the strength to keep hoping to keep waiting to keep believing is is it, all those strength are going to be drawn out of the out of your praise and worship for him because every time you praise him Every time you, you worship God, every time you go before him, you are reminding yourself, I don't care what I'm waiting for. It has nothing to do with what I'm still believing God for. What he has already done for me, if he doesn't do anything else, I'm happy. Who he has been to me, who he is in my life, is enough for me to live on for the rest of my life. The strength to keep hoping, to keep believing, to keep standing, to keep confessing, to keep exercising your faith. All those strength will be drawn out of your praise for him. Because while you're praising him, everything else will just melt to insignificance. Everything else will just not matter anymore. And while you're praising him, he will just pour all over you. Every time you praise and you worship God, you are reminding yourself of what he has already done. You are, rem you are strengthening yourself on the inside and saying, I know him. He's a faithful God. He will do what he has promised. And because of that, I'm just going to love on him. And that's why when you praise God, when you worship God, you do it freely. It doesn't matter who is talking. It doesn't matter who is looking. It doesn't matter who is around. It has nothing to do with where you are and who is there with you. This is personal. It's between you and God. Don't let anybody shame you or, 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 or talk you out of this relationship, of this contact and this connection that you have with God. It doesn't matter who is not happy. That's their problem. They should take it up with God. But as for me and myself and God, 
we're gonna we're gonna have a a blessed a blast of a time. So what are you waiting for? What are you hoping for? What are you believing God for? What is that thing that is on your list that is yet to be ticked off? Even as 2020 is, is, is running away to, to, to finishing line right now, what is that thing? Praising God. Worshiping God starts with a decision. Not because of anything, but despite of everything. It's a decision. You have to make that decision daily, hourly, minute by minute, second by second. Every moment you have to make that decision to thank God. And sometimes you have to remind yourself. You have to prompt yourself. You have to... This my wristwatch has an alarm. At every hour, the alarm will beep. And it, at, as soon as it beeps, I'm giving thanks to God. Every hour. Night, day, any time. Unless I'm, I didn't hear it. If I heard it, I will give thanks to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Every hour, if you have to remind yourself, thank God for technology. You now have your mobile phone, it's got every alarm. You have your wristwatch that talks to your phone and answer your phone calls. And whatever you have to do, put something in place. Oh, I forgot. No, no. Yes, you can forget, but you have a helper. Use that helper. I know some people are saying, well, if only you know what I'm going through. If only you just have a, a, a an idea of what I'm dealing with, you won't be talking like you're talking today. Well, maybe I don't know. And maybe I will never know. But there's a God in heaven who knows, who sees, and who can make all the difference. Is it true? It is true that you have lost your job because of this pandemic. But you haven't lost your life. Do you think you have a reason to praise him and thank him and worship him? Oh yeah, it's true that your rent is due and you don't have the money yet to pay the rent. Thank God. But you still have a roof over your head. You are not on the street yet. Oh, yes, it's true that you are sick in your body. The pain is unbearable. The agony is just... But that pain, you are feeling it in your front room watching your big TV. You are not in, in admission somewhere in hospital where your leg is hanging somewhere or your or tubes are flowing out of you like uh, uh, whatever. Oh yeah, it's true that you are still believing God for your spouse and your children and this and that. But look at it this way. You are not in an abusive relationship. What would you rather have? Is the question. Oh yes, that promotion that you've been waiting for, that you've been believing God for, that you have prayed and fasted and you've sowed and did everything for, all of a sudden, this guy that just came two days ago got the promotion. But you still have your job. You still have your job. Whatever you may be thinking is not quite there yet. It's not quite where you wanted it and how you wanted it or the, from your trajectory, from your, your blueprint and your plans and your goals, this and that. Yes, it may not be there yet. Yes, you may not have achieved it all. Yes, you may not have gotten all the wealth and 
and whatever you, you, you think you should have or you believe you should have. But remember, there are people, there are people that will give anything and everything just to be where you are right now. In that same spot where you are complaining and screaming and whinging and yeah, 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 there are some people that are just saying, God, if I can just be like him, if I can just be that place where she is, Remember, where you are right now, that same place, that same spot, that same experience, that same encounter, in that same environment that you are in right now, you didn't bring yourself into it. You didn't just wake up and then, bush, you find yourself in that supervisor's position, even though you think you should be the managing director. No. It is his grace. You know why? There are people, even among your team members, even in that same office, there are people there who are more qualified than you. And yet, his grace pointed you out. You think there's enough reason in that for you to thank him? Ladies and gentlemen, God is a faithful God. He is a faithful, faithful, faithful God. He is a faithful, faithful, faithful God. And whatever he has promised you, whatever you have found in his word, whatever you have understood about his covenant, whatever revelation that you have of him, be rest assured. He cannot. There's a difference between he will not fail you. He will not fail you means there is a chance. There is a probability. There is one in a trillion, quadruplion chance of him failing you. But the fact that he cannot means there is no possibility of failure. None whatsoever. So instead of complaining and griping, and why don't you spend that energy? Why don't you spend that time? Why don't you invest that, that moment in just the simple word of thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I know you know, and I know you are faithful. Thank you, Lord. God is willing. God is able. God is committed. In fact, he has sworn an oath. He has cut a covenant and ratified that covenant with the blood of his precious son. If he has given his son, how much more? What else will he withhold from you and I? One of the keys to getting into that, through that door, is praise, is worship. That's why the Bible said, I will enter his gate with thanksgiving. I will come into his presence with praise in my mouth because I know that when, I, when I'm in his presence, oh, there is fullness of joy and, and blessings everlasting just in his presence. And the way to get there is through the keys of praise. Thank you so much for being part of tonight's program. We will continue this next week and after and after and after until we, we, we've gotten all the juice out of this. But God is able. Oh, he is able. 
and he has done everything about you, concerning you, regarding you, related to you. He's done all of it. We just need to go and get it. God bless you. I'll see you again next week. Bye-bye.